She saw him leave that morning, but he didn't come back that afternoon. He didn't show up that night. Nobody heard from him. The teen's body was found in a rolled up gym mat in a high school in 2013. His death ruled accidental. Say my name and remember what you've done. Your hurricane has blackened out the sun. Play your game. You can't continue to kill unarmed black people and get away with it. But if Kendrick did die of an accident, how, with all that distrust, how could you even ever show that? But then on the flip side, is they didn't treat it like it, it could have been a homicide. Lowndes County Sheriff Ashley Polk announced officials were reopening the investigation. The only angle is to find justice for my son. <laughs> you can just tell death had come through our family and it just settled. Before we start this episode, I just wanted to quickly acknowledge a mistake in episode 24. And I was talking about the fight on the bus between Brian and KJ, and I accidentally said Brandon and KJ instead of Brian and KJ. This case is already confusing enough without me adding to that confusion by accidentally saying the wrong name, but hopefully nobody was confused. We've always talked about it being Brian and KJ who were in the fight on the bus. It was just a mistake in last week's episode where I said the wrong name. So I just wanted to clarify that before we continue. So I'm driving to pick up Kate, and after I get her, we're actually headed into North Carolina, which I know probably sounds a little strange because this case is in Valdosta, Georgia. So what are we doing in North Carolina? And it's something I've kind of kept close to my chest for the last month because I was really surprised that this it might actually happen, what's gonna happen in North Carolina. But even on Thursday of this week, I confirmed that everything is going down tomorrow. Whatever happens in the next few days here is going to basically put this case into perspective one way or the other in an insane way. Well, I'm gonna pick up Kate here. I'm actually sitting here quite sick today, so this job just never stops. So I can't even take a day off to be sick, but I have got some really interesting news in, and I am very, very excited about this on one of the videos I posted the other day. So I had said to my investigator, we really, really need to make sure that there's no connection between Ryan Anthony, Domek Hernandez, and the Bell family. And my investigator out of the blue said, what about the Johnsons? Could Ryan Anthony, Domek Hernandez know the Johnsons? And I really thought to myself, that, that really can't be possible, but I love the way my investigator thinks, so I asked her to run with it. Well, within 48 hours, she had gotten back to me. Ryan Anthony Domek Hernandez responded in the comments on the video. I'll be honest, I don't know what to believe anymore. It's so colluded by others' opinions and feelings. I only know what I said in the statement and what was told to me, no more no less. I have not had any further discussions with him after I went back and forth on some messaging to try to get him to interview for the show or talk about the statement that he made. Just to kind of remind everybody of what Ryan Anthony Domek Hernandez said, here's his statement. My name is Ryan Anthony Domek Hernandez and I am over the age of 21 years of age. I am giving this declaration voluntarily and I have personal knowledge of the facts stated herein and know them to be true. I met Brandon Bell in April 2016, and on one occasion was with him at his apartment in Jacksonville, Florida, when he told me that his younger brother killed Kendrick Johnson. According to Brandon Bell, Brian Bell, Ryan Hall, and Kendrick Johnson were in the gym when an argument between Brian and Kendrick began. The argument was about or over Brian's girlfriend. According to Brandon Bell, Brian was taking steroids at the time, and out of, quote, roid rage, or the effects of steroids, he struck Kendrick Johnson in the neck with a 45-pound weight or dumbbell. Brandon Bell stated that Brian Bell opined that the aforementioned blow may have broken Kendrick Johnson's neck. According to Brandon Bell, Ryan Hall was a witness to the fight and Brian Bell told Ryan Hall that if he didn't keep quiet and help him move Kendrick Johnson's body, his father, now retired FBI Special Agent Rick Bell, would make sure he, Ryan Hall, would quote, pay for it. 
Brendan Bell also told me that his father got in touch with Sheriff Chris Prine after being notified of the fight and Kendrick Johnson's death. Brandon Bell also told me that Sheriff Chris Prine got in touch with the county coroner. Brandon Bell also told me that his father got in touch with another FBI agent who in some way facilitated the editing of the high school surveillance video by corrupting or deleting some one hour and 25 minutes of the original recording. Brandon Bell also told me that after Kendrick Johnson's death that his organs were removed and newspapers placed in the cavity so as to interfere with any effort to establish the correct time of death or to otherwise disclose any other injuries. Brandon Bell also told me that the autopsy was falsely documented. So what's good about what's happening now, he is coming out of the woodworks and he wants to have an opportunity to clear his name, which I can completely respect and understand. I want people to be able to clear their names if we put out any incorrect information. The thing I love about doing true crime investigative work this way, where we release episodes every other week to kind of let the case really unfold, is that the people who watch these episodes often get involved themselves. They call in tips, they send me information, and even if they're skeptics or fans or just watching because they're curious about this particular case, often they open up new concepts to me or ideas or bring in new facts that open up new avenues that I need to look down. And I find this to be really helpful usually. So what I found interesting is Ryan Anthony Domek Hernandez had responded to some of these comments after one of the videos. And some of the people who are following the series started asking him questions. And one of these people had a name of Fitzgerald and he had asked some questions that I had really been wanting the answers to for a long time. So you're saying you know the Bells, but not the Johnsons. Did you talk to federal authorities? I must confess, I was hoping your story was true in order to bring justice for KJ and finally close this case. But anytime something falls into place so perfectly, especially after years of confusion, misinformation, and mistrust, I become very skeptical of drunk confessions. Did you ask questions or just sit and listen? By the way, I'm not trying to jam you up in any way. I sincerely want to know what actually happened to KJ. These are lingering questions that I really want answered, if you can. I'm not here for the thrill of the mystery. This mystery is very disturbing to me, and it impacts my community in a very historically tragic way. Brian actually responded to some of the questions that Fitzgerald was asking, and a lot of these questions I had asked Ryan a year before, and I had seen similar answers. So here's how he answered some of Fitzgerald's questions. I'm not sure where she got the information. No, I've never had any conversation with anyone from the immediate Johnson family. I have had conversations with Shaveen King Jr. And in 2019 to present, I got messages from people that claim to be cousins or distant relatives. But from 2016 through 2019, I never had any conversations with anyone. But if they can show proof of a phone call, text message with my phone number, Facebook, Instagram, or otherwise, I would love them to show it and prove it. I do know I was threatened and someone going to the authorities to show that I had contact. But again, if they could prove that or perjury, I'd be in front of a judge. If I said anything and lied about it, that's perjury and I have never perjured myself. What I think is amazing is in us going back and forth on the comments on YouTube, he had agreed to do a lie detector test. So I told him he could pick the lie detector place because I didn't want to okay. be looked at like our bias or what our thinking is on this has bled into this at all. So right. we picked a neutral lie detector place, which he picked out. Okay. And then I just called and verified because obviously I need to also make sure that they're a <laughs> legit yeah. lie detector place, which they did. They're been around a long time. Everything seems completely legit. And when I called, they were able to get me right on the right tracks. And if they were licensed and showed that they were a credible place that I would book the appointment for him. About a week ago, I called the polygraph examiner, who is the person that he requested to go to. The website is thepolygraphexaminer.com. So everything looked really legit already on the website. I called the gentleman. We went through the whole process. I figured out what it would cost and when we could do it. And he let me know some dates that they were available to do the lie detector test so that I could go back to Ryan Anthony and put the dates down so that he could select one that works for him. So I was really bummed at first because in the comments, I put the dates up 
and I didn't get any response from him. In that, I also said, email me. So I was kind of waiting for an email to come back from him. About a week went by, and all of a sudden, I got a message on Facebook. Do your own research, not what the police investigated or stride Jones. He had had me blocked on Facebook, though, so he could only message me, so I couldn't respond to him there either. So then I went back onto YouTube telling him, hey, look, I can't respond to you. Either send me an email or message me, open up my messages on Facebook. So he opened up the messages on Facebook. Are you going to do the lie detector test? I think it's thrown this case into a lot of confusion because people are like, why would this Ryan Anthony Doma Hernandez lie? Yeah. Like what like motive? What, yeah, exactly. Right. What motive would he have for doing that? Yes. And so I think that's part of it is, you know, I think a lot of people are wondering. So here's what we're doing. I had originally reached out to Ryan Anthony Domek Hernandez in previous episodes, and he did not seem interested in speaking to me. He asked me not to reach out to him again, but finally, like months later, I all of a sudden got a message from him. And he said, I'll take a polygraph test. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So that's what. So, so we're gonna go do a lie detector test on the. Yes. All right. Yes. That's gonna be cool. So it's supposed to be tomorrow morning at nine. So don't crash. <laughs> oh. We'll try. <laughs> Oops. Yep. Make the appointment for January thirtieth. I had emailed you. And I messaged him, and he had let me know he had emailed me a few days before. And when I went in, the email was in my spam. Ash, if they can do January 30th, that's Monday. That's my day off. My question is, when I pass the polygraph, which I will, what kind of plot will you go with on that? Because the thing is, you called me a liar, and I don't really like that, whether that was a tactic you used to get me to say something. But there's got to be some corrective actions taken on that. So January 30th in Raleigh, and after the results, I will agree to do an interview with you. Now, you also have to remember everything is five years ago. I've had a lot of emotional stuff happen since then, and I also don't remember every detail, only details about who, what, where, why. Thanks. Ryan Domek Hernandez. What's amazing is at first I thought once I gave him the dates, he backed out and I thought he just wasn't going to respond to me again. But what's really nice is he is responsive and it does sound like he's committed to doing the lie detector test on January 30th, which is one of the dates the polygraph examiner had available. So we're going to do a polygraph test with him to see if his statement is valid and we will showcase that openly and honestly with the audience. And it sounds like Ryan Anthony might interview with us after the test. But either way, we'll know the results of the test. I'm very curious about this and very excited about this. And I'm pretty impressed with Ryan Anthony Domek Hernandez that he has stood up for himself and asking for a lie detector test, because I think that's a great way to kind of gauge what we're looking at here. Now I'm going to call the polygraph examiner, because when I called them the other day, I was just trying to get information and figured out how to move forward with this. But now I'm going to call them so that we can actually book an appointment with Ryan Anthony Domek Hernandez on January 30th. I had called about a week and a half ago requesting some information about your lie detector tests. It sounds like the gentleman we want to have the lie detector test done with wants to do it in Raleigh and he wants to do it on January 30th. I just wanted to see if that date is still available and if so, if we can get the deposit going and get this booked, I would be grateful. After booking the lie detector test, I wanted to take a minute and kind of review the messages that had gone on between Fitzgerald and Ryan Anthony to see if there was any new information or anything new that I could gather from those messages. A couple things jumped out at me right away, and I think one of them you can clearly see in this message from Ryan Anthony to Fitzgerald. I don't know any Johnsons, maybe a cousin that is related, but not the name Johnson. And yes, I know both the Bell brothers. I thought to myself, what are the chances that his statement could be true? When we investigated this, we were really quickly able to uncover information that showed that Ryan Anthony had connections with members of the Johnson's family. And we even had video of him and one of the cousins in a car together singing a song. And when we tried to look up any information in regards to if the Bells and Ryan Anthony knew each other, we were able to find no connection whatsoever. 
So now I sit here and I ask, could it be possible that Ryan Anthony just happened to be friends with the biological cousins of the Johnsons and not really know that that's who he was friends with and at the same time have known the Bells during all of this? The circumstances surrounding Ryan Anthony's statement also seemed highly suspect to me because the Johnsons were basically involved in a civil suit where they had asked for over $100 million from dozens of individuals and they lost that civil suit and because of that they were required to pay back the money that any people who were involved in that civil suit had paid towards lawyers. So how conveniently Ryan Anthony's statement happens to come out right at this time and the Johnsons actually used it to try to get this judgment against them to go away. But the judge stood by the judgment. So I guess it just kind of went down in the books that Ryan Anthony's statement was some sort of false reporting. So now I sit here and I'm surprised and confused why Ryan Anthony is so confident he's going to pass this lie detector test. Obviously, Ryan Anthony is only saying that he heard this statement from Brandon Bell. He's not saying that he knows what Brandon Bell is saying was true. And I think we really have to be willing to separate those two things. If the lie detector test comes back that Ryan Anthony is telling the truth, that's only based on what he heard in a statement from Brandon. It doesn't mean that the statement he heard from Brandon was true. And we have to be able to separate those two things if this confession ends up being true according to the lie detector test. If you remember when we went through Ryan Anthony's original statement, we found many evidentiary points that just did not hold water and they didn't seem to be true. And one of those was the fact that Kendrick Johnson and Taylor Eakin appeared to have never been in a relationship together. And we gathered that information from Kenyatta, Kendrick Johnson's sister, and from Hannah, Taylor Eakin's best friend at the time. So if they're not part of a relationship, then Ryan Anthony's statement starts to fall apart pretty quickly. But again, that doesn't mean Ryan Anthony didn't hear this statement from Brandon. So now we really have to look at what parts of this statement can be true or not true, depending on how Ryan Anthony's lie detector test comes back. One of the things I'm really questioning now is this really specific statement Ryan Anthony makes in his statement. The argument was about or over Brian's girlfriend. So this I find really interesting because Taylor and Brian say they didn't start dating until February or March after the incident happened with Kendrick Johnson. So in Ryan Anthony's statement, he does seem to implicate that the fight was over a girl, but why does everyone believe that he's speaking about Taylor Eakin? He doesn't say Taylor Eakin in the statement. So I wonder could, Brandon, if this statement is true, been talking about somebody else? Another point that stood out was there was also this statement. According to Brandon Bell, Brian Bell, Ryan Hall, and Kendrick Johnson were in the gym when an argument between Brian and Kendrick began. But now we really have to go back and look at how Ryan Anthony says that statement. He's not saying that Brandon Brian and Ryan Hall were involved in the murder of Kendrick Johnson. He's saying that Brian and Ryan Hall are involved in the murder of Kendrick Johnson. Brandon is not saying that he is a co-conspirator in this crime. He is just retelling the story as he knows it or believes it. And that's, of course, if Ryan Anthony is telling the truth. So if you believe Brandon said this, then you have to believe he is willing to implicate his brother, Brian, his dad, Rick Bell, another classmate, Ryan Hall, Sheriff Prime, Marianne Gaffney Kraft, who was the medical examiner at the time, Harrington Funeral Home, Bill Watson, the coroner. And this is at a minimum, you have to believe he threw all these people under the bus and he did it to somebody who he wasn't even really that good of friends with. So I wonder why he would have gone ahead and told someone like Ryan Anthony all this information. So if Ryan Anthony is telling the truth here, what's left? Really, the only thing that's left is you have to either believe Brandon said this because he believes this is what happened, or you have to believe that Brandon made this up and if we believe Brandon made this up just to look cool or to show off in front of Ryan Anthony, I just have to wonder why somebody would do that. But that's the other side of the coin here.
currently I'm finding it almost impossible to believe that Ryan Anthony is telling the truth here. If he is telling the truth, this piles on such a new level of oddities in this case that it will be very hard to know what direction to go after I find out this information. I think the crux of this is I believe that this lie detector analyst is going to do a brilliant job and I really want to be able to accept whatever results come in. And it's really hard to think about what that will look like if the results are that Ryan Anthony's statement is true. Another thing that had really got my attention is we had been unable to locate an address for Brandon Bell in Jacksonville, Florida in April of 2016 when Ryan Anthony came forward with this statement. And we were able to confirm this with not only being able to find an address for him in Valdosta, Georgia, but we were also able to confirm that he was going to college there at the time. Is what Ryan Anthony cleared up for us, however, is Brandon was staying with his girlfriend, his girlfriend who lived in Jacksonville, Florida at the time. Even in episode 21, I requested help with this information. The weird thing is I didn't think it was gonna come from the source himself. Now, I just want to be very clear. If anyone has any evidence that Brandon Bell lived in Jacksonville, Florida in April of 2016, I'm more than happy to take a look at that and to showcase it if we find it to be factual. So currently, it does appear that the address and explanation for why Brandon Bell might have been in Jacksonville, Florida does seem to be accurate. We have located the apartment complex and it is on Gate Parkway in Jacksonville, Florida. We're cross-checking just a bit more information on that and we'll get back to you, but currently it does look like that is true. Brandon's girlfriend was living in Jacksonville, Florida at the time. I already confirmed as of Thursday with Ryan Anthony Domic Hernandez, he's responsive. He seems very confident that the lie detector is going to show that he's not lying. Right, so. ooh, okay. This is gonna be cool then. Right. One of the things he wrote in his letter to me was, what are you going to do when this comes out that I'm telling the truth? I said to him, and I'm genuinely honest about this, I will report on it no matter which way it goes. And so that's why I think it's so fascinating that he's willing to do it. Because if he is lying, why would you take a lie detector, yeah. you know? When we go there tomorrow, there's a few things you have to do for a lie detector test. Like you can't have anything on your hands. You can't have any illnesses that make you shake because you have to be able to sit still for a lie detector test. Okay. You can't have had any drama happen that morning, meaning, you know, you don't want the person coming in a highly agitated state. Okay. So I had Ryan Anthony Domic Hernandez reach out to the lie detector place and kind of make sure he fulfilled all the correct criteria. Uh, they said he did so that he doesn't have any illnesses that will preclude him from being able to take the test and he's committed to coming in and doing the test according to what he says accurately. What's cool about this lie detector place is not only do they do the lie detector test, but they also use this specific kind of chair so it can tell if someone's trying to squirm or outsmart the Ooh, test. That's cool. Okay. Because currently, this is just a hypothesis I have, and I'm going to, no matter what happens, just tell the truth and showcase that honestly, but I currently don't believe that he's telling the truth. Yeah. So my hypothesis is that the lie detector will show he's lying. What do you think might happen? Uh, it's a pure, I don't know. I think if he shows up, he's telling the truth. If he doesn't show up, then we have our answer, realistically. Yeah, right? I feel like <laughs> we've kind of paved I'm the not, way for him to be there on his terms. Yeah, I'm not really banking on him showing up, but I mean, if this was all like really his idea, then our answer we'll see <laughs> well yeah and what's really nice six or nine months ago I had mentioned something about it but I never pressured him again you know right. I never was like okay so then if he's the one pushing it then maybe maybe there is a chance that he's actually telling the truth well yeah and I think he was a little frustrated with our episode that talked about how we felt like he was lying and we showed the connection between the Johnsons and right. him he, I think he was pretty upset that he was showcased in that sort of light. And so that's also something I always want to do on the show is make sure that anyone who's mentioned has the right and ability to speak up and tell their side. Yeah. It doesn't mean we can't examine that and look at if it's truthful or not, but I want them to be able to say honestly what their version of reality is so that we can take a look at it. And his statement's so important because if he is telling the truth, then that says we need to examine that statement further and how we got to that point. If it's one more 
piece of this being false, how much information do people need before they right, believe yeah. that this was not a murder? Right. Yeah, I think that's right, because I think that's it up there. Yeah, it is residence. Yeah, so just park right in front of the closest to the lobby there, and then I'll run in. Okay, I guess I'll explain to you what's happening if you want to sit over there, Kate. He's here, and the lie detector guy sat me down and he showed me his operation. He can't be interviewed or won't be interviewed. He said no, but he will give me the results. He said he'll call me as soon as he's done. He's got a packed day though, so I guess that means that he's hoping Ryan Anthony just sits down and does the test, because I guess people dick with him all the time. It's like they try to slow it up or do things, because obviously they're, some of them are probably lying, so they're probably trying to get out of things. He's like, but I'll know right away, because either he'll be doing that guy doing that or he'll just take the to test. It's 9.24 now. I don't know if that's a long time or how long the guy usually takes, but he did tell me that some people try to cheat the test and make it take really long to just try to confound things. So hopefully that's not what we're dealing with here. Currently, we're 24 minutes in and I haven't heard anything. So fingers crossed he's doing it legit. All right, so now it is 9.48. So we've been sitting here for 48 minutes. So it's very painful at this point. So I have um, some feelings that this is not going so well down there, but Ryan Anthony Domet Hernandez requested not to see me ahead of time because I might have caused some anxiety, so I made sure I wasn't down there when he came in, but now I'm kind of like, what is going on? It's been 48 minutes and we still haven't heard anything, and from what the lie detector guy said, he only asks one question, so I don't understand, but I guess we'll just keep waiting. They just text, ready for you in one minute, so I'm just gonna go down and talk to them. Say my name and remember what you've done Your hurricane has blackened out the sun Play your game in a tangled web you spun Send your rain while water fills my lungs I can feel the air I still bleed and break Though my heart is made of stone 